Welcome back to Let's Play Ghost of a Tale. I'm Burning Dog Face, and last time we were introduced to Tylo here, who has been imprisoned after his wife refused to sing for the... Oh, sorry about that. For the Baron. Oh, it does work! Oh, well, fair. Oh. That's interesting. I want to save before I set that thing on fire. Uh... Okay. Interesting mechanic. Now, let's see if it sends this guy running. Even though... Yeah, it does the last one I had in my hand. Great. The Banner of the Red Paw, the symbol of an oppressive regime. Oh. Is it just like a collectible or something? Okay, fuck the man, I guess. We also got a bottle of rot gut for this guy, but before I do that, uh... A green bug, known colloquially as greenies. These bugs are both plentiful and highly nutritious. Red bug! Known commonly as reddens, these bugs are becoming increasingly rare due to their delicious taste, I'm sure. Bottle of Rotgut. The bottle's walls are unusually thick. The interior is coated with wax, as Rotgut has been known to dissolve glass. Shit. Even, uh... Even acid doesn't eat through glass. That's why they keep it in beakers. While I'm here... Oh, uh, yeah, trusty loot. And... Figurine of your child. The figurine of your infant son, Bryn. Bryn's Lutka is stained black with ash. How incredibly ominous. Then there's these books, which I didn't even get into last time. Like this mysterious message we found in the cell. Oh, I just assumed Inspect and Raid would do the same thing. This message is written on a scrap of thin, waxed paper of the kind used by the Rat Guard to send official messages between their outposts. Yeah, there was that. Do I want to step out of the cell? Since they're probably making him uncomfortable, just staring at him. Huh. Um... Mera's book. This book contains flowers dried and pressed between its pages. Each is a memory of Mera, of the moments that led to the day you first met and of all the days since. The blank pages await the days that will pass once you are together again. That's it, uh, Tylo. Keep up hope. By the way, I like it down there in the, uh, corner. Not where I was actually indicating. But, um, I like that it says, uh, AM, because we just have no idea deep in this dungeon. Uh, oh, it's the, uh, just that. Okay, fine. I did look at this when I was testing. The songbook. Your songbook written and compiled over years on the road. The binding of your songbook has been damaged, a number of pages torn out. Many of the songs contained herein are traditional lays, generations old and belonging to no creature, while others are compositions of your own. So I guess that's going to be a collectible. I do note that it starts on page four, which is interesting. The Maiden Wouldn't Sing. I'm not going to try to read these so uh, like, play, sing these songs, incidentally. Not the least reason of which is that I don't know the music. And it would be an exercise in futility at best. But this one, I think this is something he was writing, like, himself just now in the cell. Or, like, you know, to pass the time as he's sitting in the cell over the last however many days. The tale of a minstrel and a maiden, both imprisoned by a cruel baron for refusing to perform. Do as asked, it matters not. You do not mean it. You do not. You need not mean it. Hmm. A satirical lay popular among mice living under the rule of the Red Paw it asserts the theory that the group name for each kind of creature accurately reflects their true nature. Uh, tidings of magpies, murders of crows, surfeit of skunks, mischief of mice, sneaking of weasels... Uh, right, a plague of rats, of course. That's not very, uh, flattering. 
The Gilded Warrior, the last moments of the Battle of Paraclave immortalized in song. Inspired by twelve heroes, the Rat Forces rally to at last defeat the Army of the Green Flame. The Ballad of the Coward King, a lay recounting the final days of the reign of King Roderick III, the last king of the Rats, who fled his kingdom on the eve of a great battle and was never seen again. Huh. Uh, drinking shanty popular with rogues and pirates, responsible for the deaths of more pirates than the gallows. Yeah, this is interesting. This is the song that they, the Baron wanted Mera to sing, The Poisoned Cup, a lay that recounts the shameful actions of the mice during the War of the Green Flame. And it looks like they made themselves a jade goblet to try and uh, get the Green Flame on their side. The Rat with Two Tails, a raucous lay recounting the misadventures of an over-endowed rat in search of pleasure. Oh dear. Costume book. Your book of characters and her costumes. I did not look into this. A minstrel will sometimes perform in the guise of a character from their song, be it the hero or the villain of the tale. This book describes the items of clothing required to complete each of Tylo's costumes. Just the one. Minstrel. The garb of a minstrel is simple, yet not austere. The hood is crafted by your own paw under the guidance of your master. Every minstrel is required by their guild to wear a minstrel's hood and a rope belt. Hmm. An empty wine bottle from a vineyard in the foothills of the Sarastra Mountains. The bottle shatters and thrown, and even when empty, is heavy enough to knock a full-grown rat unconscious. That's quite enough of that, I think. You know, I might as well see what this looks like. Yeah, it's just a hood. Not as fancy as mine at all. Sorry about that. Pusillanimous. It's a word that nobody uses anymore that means cowardly. Oh. As you do. With a deft flick of his head, the frog sends the bottle spinning across his cell. It shatters into pieces against the wall. So that will have gotten the dude's attention. Every time that scrunt gets soused, I have to put up with his damn snoring. Oh, right. I like this footnote system, by the way. It's an interesting way to get lore across, even if that lore is very silly. Down as you ask, now will you help me? I like these facial expressions. Oh, I get it, yeah. The word is a pirate means you're actually going to screw them over. Uh, Mara, my wife. Wearing a hood, yes. And who can say? Kolba. A mouse's hat, or hood, counts among their most prized possessions, and is a source of great pride, representing as it does their profession and their social status. A mouse of any repute is never seen by any creature, save for their spouse, without their kolba. There are, however, notable exceptions. It is said, for example, that while occupying the town watchtower in protest against harsh, harsh working conditions, the quarry mice of Hume threw off their hoods, emphasizing to all the seriousness of the matter whilst at the same time making it difficult for the soldiers of the Red Paw to later identify the culprits. Piss. Now, where the fuck are we? You're in Dwindling Heights Keep in the shores of Ikevalia. For centuries, the keep at Dwindling Heights has defended the eastern shore of Lake Velia. Though once a fine building, the keep has long since fallen into disrepair, its greatest enemy no longer marauding ferrets, but instead the acidic waters of the lake, which are slowly eroding the cliff face on which the keep stands. It's for this reason that among the locals, the fortress has become known as Dwindling Heights. Hmm. Why is the waters of the lake acidic? Oh.
Hmm. That doesn't seem like a very useful question, so maybe I should leave it until I find a better one. Yeah, okay, I can ask whenever I want. Ooh, a little hitch every time it auto saves. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know what? I'm gonna go save in a box or something, and then uh, see what happens when I ask that question. Oops. Quick save! That was also a test to see if the guard could hear me from all the way across the hall, and he did not! Lake Valia. Valia is a last in uh, inland sea. Oh, okay. Spanning from Meridia in the east to the distant shores of Saltar. Once dominated by the sleek ships of the Valian frogs, the lake is now policed with the galleons of the Red Paw. For its port and trade routes are vital to the service of the Rat Empire. I find it interesting that they capitalize the first letter of the species names. Like they're, uh, s you know, different races in Star Trek or whatever. Uh, the eastern shore of Valia is defended by a chain of fortress keeps, of which Dweenland Heights is but one. Valia's waters are stagnant and acidic, yet home to a myriad of creatures, including the Sunder Crab and the Gowler Eel. Several leagues offshore, a heavy fog enshrouds the lake, a hazard for shipping and a haven for pirates. Legend claims that hidden within the myth uh, lies the mythical island of Periclave. And that is not the only mystery Valia might hold. Ancient texts and lays describe Valia not as a lake, but as an endless plain on which the final battle of the War of the Green Flame took place. The scholars of Keem speculate that the... S I love these names they're just throwing in without context. The scholars of Keem speculate that the or confusion arises from a mistranslation of the original texts, but it is just possible that the truth lies beneath the waters of the lake itself. That was not a very helpful answer. Just reminding him. Florins. The florin, F, is the official currency of the five rat provinces. Its coinage is mounted, er, minted in 1F, 5F, and 10F denominations from a naturally occurring alloy of silver, gold, and copper found only in the Sarastra Mountains. The coin bears the emblem of the red paw on its face. Though some older florins, featuring a portrait of Roderick, the last Rat King, are still in circulation. Colloquially known as cowards, these coins are greatly prized, for they are substantially larger than their modern counterparts, and so can be melted down and recast in molds struck from the newer coins. Three cowards can be used to make as many as five florins. Why would there be florins in your chamber pot? Why? I'm not going to hold them in forever, am I? Prisoner's Purse! Captives brought to dwindling heights will often swallow their valuables in order that they not be confiscated by the guards. They call it the Prisoner's Purse. Inevitably, nature will take its course. It's said that great wealth can be found in the chamber pots and sewers of dwindling heights. It's... it will be too soon. This water doesn't even look clean. I hope that's water. Uh... Ah, oh, there we go. Don't think about it, just take the coins! I wanted to drop down on all fours and run around in there so I could pretend his hands were cleaner. Oh, well, thank you, Carol, you small, strange man. Enjoy being locked up. I guess. You frickin' weirdo. Can I save from this basket? Yes. Cool. I guess I'll save that... silly question about the cursing, because it did lead to the other thing, so...
get up there? At least I do know that it's AM. Aha! So long, suckers. What, are they just gonna chain a guy to the wall on the stairs? Several guys? Fuck. Okay, not going that way. I don't know if I would call this an open world game, but I do understand that it lets you at least wander the keep as freely as you are able to at any given time. I'm not surprised, however, to find that the early bits are, uh, more straightforward. I'm gonna do something dumb, you guys! Let's burn this banner right next to the guy and see if he wakes up. Oh, he did! Oh, oh! Okay, 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 okay! Ugh. That didn't go well. He must have vanished! Alright, that was dumb, I'll admit it. But I was pretty sure I could get away. And if not, I could load. <laughs> well, I should do a manual save, actually. Because I quick save myself into something dumb. He immediately goes back to sleep. All the fucking doors are locked. Uh, okay. The door out there needed the screaming key, I think. And so did the door outside my cell, which he opened. Ooh. Holy shit, I'm gonna get myself killed. His butt is the size of, like, my entire body. Okay, can I not steal it then? Oh! Ha-ha! Anything on this side? No, let's, uh... Not push our luck. Ooh. Or I could push my luck. Ooh, mushroom is... Oh, Lord. Oh. And we're running! Uh. Oh, okay. Uh. All the way he stopped dead, it's like he knows. And I hear another guy on the other side of the wall. Oh. Wow. I'll just uh, close that. And, uh, 
and hopefully I won't have to, you know, burn anything else in front of any guards. Oh god, here's another one. Wait, if I... Okay, they're called the Red Paw. <gasps> oh, shit! Ooh, that was close. Anything I can get from you? Huh? Huh? This is dumb, this is dumb. Oh! Ooh, get in there! Ooh, that was close! Oh, I can't believe I did that. I'm bold today! Maybe it's because I haven't actually seen what they can do yet. I haven't actually been dumb enough to get caught yet. But, uh, there's the timer. So I'll just stay in this box for the moment. Uh, I'm Burning Dogface, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play... Ghost of a Tale. Sorry, I was just realizing that I didn't finish that thought earlier. Uh, they're called the Red Paw, and I can see the symbol, I, what, I, what I assume is their logo, in the upper left when I'm not equipping an item. But, uh, all the banners are purple. Weird. The guard's handkerchief. The handkerchief is in fact a small flag representing the garrison colors of Dwindling Heights. It has, however, clearly been used as a handkerchief. Ew. Huh. Anyway, I will see you next time, Burning Dog fans. Later!